So let's talk about the Cleveland Browns. They finished 7 and 10 last season, marking their second consecutive missed playoff appearance. Coach Kevin Stefanski fired their defensive coordinator Joe Woods after three years with the team. He ends up bringing in Jim Swartz, who is known for getting great production from the defensive line. The issue with that, though, is the Browns didn't have the personnel to complement Miles Garrett. They did have Jadavion Clowney, who, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing. <laughs> Clowney wasn't even active in the Week 18 game against the Steelers. He was complaining about lack of playing time. He was even complaining that Garrett was getting star treatment. Pretty much just a bunch of nonsense. I mean, I do agree with him that there were games that the Browns simply just didn't show enough effort. Like, for example, and if you want to go back to the Christmas Eve game where they were facing the Saints, it was what, six degrees out, one of their coldest games ever, and they lost 17 to 10. The Saints play in a dome, by the way. There was some loss to the season where Cleveland just they didn't make the right plays. And regardless, they were missing Deshaun Watson for 11 games due to a suspension. They still went seven and 10. So you add in this new personnel that I'm about to get into. You add in, of course, a full season now of Watson. The Browns look extremely promising. Before I get into the rest of the video though, if you guys are a fan of the Cleveland Browns, you've come to the right place. I haven't made a video in a while on your team, but I'm super intrigued by it. I'm actually listing them as the winners of the offseason so far. I love what the Panthers have done. I love what the Lions have done and some other teams, but Cleveland, they were just absolutely garbage against the run last season. They were the second worst team. We'll get into Dovlin Tomlinson in a second here, but... What about the addition of Agbanya? Oh God, Ankaronko? Last season with the Houston Texans, he finished the season racking up five sacks in six games. He's just 27 years old. He hasn't had the most amount of playing time. So the Browns are betting that he's gonna take his game to the next level. Similar to trading for Elijah Moore, right? You're hoping that these guys can take their game to the next level. And if they do, we're talking about Cleveland being the best team in the AFC. Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo, I get it. But if Watson again gets back to his old self, you now add in that deep threat and more. You can also run routes. You can play outside. You can play in the slot. They just brought in, of course, Marquise Goodwin, who ran a 4-2-7 back in like 2013 when he was drafted. He's still fast now. Anthony Swartz hasn't exactly panned out so that's why they brought in more but you still have amari cooper donovan people's jones i know this video is all over the place bear with me this is my first browns video in like two years so i'm really trying to you know lock in right now but overall i've always liked this team just last season they didn't have enough bodies up front and that's why i said that i would get into davlin tomlinson four-year deal middle of the defense he's one of the best interior defensive linemen in football he clogs up running lanes with his size and strength and with Cleveland being you know, minus 23.11 in terms of EPA against the run, they had to do something. So the thing that I like about Tomlinson as well when I was looking at his film is that he also does use his lateral quickness to sort of like engulf ball carriers. He's got 13 sacks over six seasons, which might not sound like much, but it means that he's going to see double teams and he's also going to provide that interior push to take away quarterbacks throwing platforms. He ranked number 34 among all NFL interior defensive linemen and pass rush win rate at 7.3. So adding in him is gonna be a huge upgrade to this defense. I wanna talk about Elijah Moore now though, because you guys really didn't give up much. I mean, you traded back 32 picks and then you get a guy who has two more years on his rookie deal. Elijah Moore has never played with a good quarterback in his career. And he is a smaller sized receiver, but he has the speed and that dynamic playmaking ability, which the Browns need. As I mentioned, you know, Anthony Swartz hasn't been able to fill that role. Moore plays out wide 50.2% of the time and slot 49.6. And he's a true burner. He's going to be huge in this offense. I like that he can, of course, you know, burn teams while also being able to create underneath for the tight ends and Amari Cooper. So when you can create separation, you're an easy target. He also doesn't drop the ball. I'm looking at my notes and, oh no, I did take notes on this. Okay. Yeah. So he only dropped two balls his rookie year. And then last year, zero on 59 targets. So the fact that you're getting a guy with hands who can run routes and can also burn you over the middle, he's just going to be huge for this offense. So 
Other moves that the Browns have made, Juan Thornhill, they signed him after releasing John Johnson III. I mean, I'm pretty sure every Browns fan expected Johnson to be released after the following 2022 season. He just hasn't lived up to that contract he got. Wish him nothing but the best. He seems like a good, genuine dude, but his time as a Brown had to come to an end. Thornhill agreed to a three-year, $21 million deal. He started in all 16 games he played in last season, had a career-high 71 combined tackles, one sack, nine passes defended, and three interceptions. He does have two Super Bowl rings with the Chiefs, so you're getting a guy with experience coming over to your team. And he did say, I, I read an article talking about how he was like, the Browns, they look legit. We're ready to win a Super Bowl, and I feel the same way about them. They legitimately look like the best team in the AFC North right now. Love the Ravens with Lamar, love Burrow and the Bengals. Got a lot of love for the Steelers as well. But Cleveland right now is looking like my team that I'm going to be covering in that division that I'm going to be rooting for. Hopefully this video gets views. Like I said, if you're still watching, smash that like button. I'd appreciate it. But another move I talked a little bit about it earlier was bringing in Marquise Goodwin to a one-year deal. I mean, he's a former third-round pick. He's got blazing speed. He is going to be 33 in the middle of the season, but he has nine years of experience. So he's just a big play threat waiting to happen. I love the addition of him and Moore. And I mean, you add that in with, again, we haven't even talked about Nick Chubb. Might be the best running back in the league. Of course, he had the most the highest broken tackle rate last season that I saw. Number second was David Montgomery. So, I mean, the offensive line is good. I would say the most underrated move that the Browns have made, though, and if you stay to the end, then here's a W, right? Maurice Hurst. I mean, he's an exceptional pass rusher. He has an incredible motor, constant leg drive, and a strong upper body that gives him an advantage over his opponent. He's also just a consistent a player on a snap to snap basis in terms of you know get off pad level and hand usage he's probably going to be an excellent rotation you know three tech and sub package type of player for the browns he does have injury problems throughout the past two seasons which is why the browns were able to sign him to a one-year deal that you know he could easily outplay in 2023 but that's just what it takes man you bring in these guys that are good football players there's nothing i love more than talented football players the browns brought in a ton of them and I mean, last season, there were so many games that they just should have won, right? Like, how about the one early on against the Chargers? You know, a couple of weeks after that against the Ravens. You know, Donovan Peoples-Jones ends up fumbling, and then you know, the Ravens recover that. And then the last game in Pittsburgh, they lost by 14. Deshaun Watson threw two interceptions, and the Browns' defense just looked horrible. So the Browns, they're heading in the right direction. They've got a hell of a football team. I'm looking forward to covering them. And let's hope this video, you know, can kind of get out there and crack the algorithm because there's just something about me making this video that kind of just has me you know, back into the, the swing of things, man. I really appreciate you guys for the love and it's your boy Swaggy signing out. Peace.